All right. There we go. Maybe. Hmm. There it goes. Again. Okay. All right. Back in business. Okay. So um, for 2020, uh, you will have noticed that our average increase across all plans was 5%. Uh, we know it's been a big year for Centra, and so we wanted to limit this increase um, for our caregivers and just make sure that we're doing our best to take care of our teams this year. So what that looks like for Centra is an 8119 cost share. So Centra is covering 81% of the plan this year, followed by 19% that we are picking up as caregivers. Um, for medical plan changes, you will notice that we did remove the PPO or open plan this year as it was previously called. And then we renamed the two remaining plans to the basic care plan, which used to be our basic point of service plan. And then our HDHP or high deductible health plan is now the HDHP Advantage. What you will notice, which is an awesome feature this year, is the basic care plan will now operate more in line with that open plan, so you do not have to name a primary care physician, and um, in-network referrals are not necessary any longer to specialists. So that's a really great option for anyone who's still looking to have the functionality of that PPO plan that's not remaining any longer um, and still be able to have similar options. New feature we added this year is hospital indemnity insurance. This is a voluntary coverage, so it functions similarly to like critical illness or accident insurance, uh, which are all offered through UNUM. We partner with UNUM to provide these services. Um, but a quick summary of that is it will provide financial protection for covered individuals paying a benefit due to hospitalizations. Uh, and then this benefit's paid directly to the employee in a lump sum regardless of the cost of treatment. Um, anyone can use, caregivers can use the benefit to meet their out-of-pocket expenses and any extra bills that, in, that occur. So this is a nice um, addition if you just want a little bit of extra coverage. Um, this is a new, new option that you can add in this year. Something else we're really excited about this year is um, increasing our HSA contributions. If you were on the high deductible health plan last year, uh, you would have seen that Centra um, gives you either 500 as an individual or 750 as a family towards your HSA if you chose that plan. Um, and just as a um, quick thought there, when people come in throughout the middle of the year, this is a prorated amount. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, as you continue to grow your teams and they come in throughout the year, these numbers are prorated based on when the individual starts working at Centra. But for 2020, we did increase those rates. Um, and so you'll notice that they're now getting 750 towards the HSA contribution for an individual and 1,000 for families. So we're really excited for that. Um, because we think it's a great way to um, really help subsidize that HSA contribution. And just as a reminder, that HSA can only go along with the high deductible health plan advantage. There also has been uh, several pharmacy changes this year. Uh, and what I want you to notice at the very bottom, that asterisk, any member that's impacted by these changes that we'll talk about, will be contacted directly by CVS. So we want to make sure you understand that. We think it's very important that anyone knows if we're disrupting anything within their uh, medical plan design. Um, but the first big change is our pharmacy network will change. Um, so this is just the network that we are using. We are still with CVS as our carrier for prescriptions. Um, but the network itself will change. And what that means is um, we will no longer uh, have Walgreens as a part of our network. So we will want to make sure we're moving towards um, CVS, uh, Kroger, Walmart, um, Albertsons or Safeway, Rite Aid, places like that. We did have a question come up yesterday about Rite Aid being bought out by um, Walgreens. Uh, and some of them have been, but many of them are still owned by the Albertson Safeway brand, so you can still use those Rite Aids is what we have found out. Um, we also have uh, or will be posting more information about all of the pharmacies that you can go to on Lawson. 
Um, so if you have any additional questions about local pharmacies or other pharmacies that you might use, that information will be available to you. Uh, the other change is that individuals who are taking a proton pump inhibitor, um, they, will, they will only be able to receive 90 days of that prescription drug without a prior authorization. And then after that 90 days, if they need to continue on that uh, therapy, they will need an authorization from their physician to do so. Um, and then the last change is what's called the advanced control formulary. So um, some members that are on uh, drugs right now that are not generic will be moved towards a generic drug of a lower cost. Um, and again, all of members impacted by these changes will be contacted directly by CBS. You'll get mailers, um, phone calls, they will be reaching out and they can help you with any of these changes. They can help you find a new pharmacy, um, they can help you uh, figure out how the generic drug would work or how you would make that change and what it would look like for you. So they will be um, holding your hand through this process and making sure that it is a smooth change for any members impacted by these things. So that is our, um, our biggest changes for the 2020 plan year. I am gonna go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, one of the things I wanna start us off with as a reminder, and if you were at CLT, we talked a little bit about this, but um, as you start talking to your caregivers about open enrollment, just the reminder that all benefits eligible employees, they really need to go in and select or not select um, their coverage options for 2020. Really important for you to make sure that you are um, having them go in and, and either elect what coverage they want or say they don't want that coverage. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over for questions. So please um, use that chat box and uh, we will get started uh, with, I have Brenda uh, Johnson and then um, Barb Nash here with us today to answer any of your questions. And until we until we get any com, coming through, um, Barb's just going to cover a few things that come up typically um, through the PCHP space. She is the one of our directors at PCHP, so she's going to go ahead and talk about a couple of things for you. Good morning. Um, I guess I first like to say too, if you have any questions, you know that aren't covered today, you can always call our customer service department and they're they're there to answer questions you can feel free to call or email me and I'll be happy to to answer what I can or direct you to the right person my role is to be sure that the the center account and the center employees um, are everything's working well for your plan because when you're ill you don't want to be worrying about your insurance you want to focus on your your health condition so please I'll just put that out there you can feel free to call us if you're looking yourself or for your team members as to decide it between the basic plan or the, the high deductible plan, there's a really nice tool out there on Lawson where you can um, ask you some questions because what you want to do is you really want to look at your individual and your family health condition and you want to do the, the math, the calculation between the difference in premium and also the contributions that Centra is making. So it is a very individual decision, but that can really be a tool to, to help you um, in deciding between the, the two different plans. Um, going over back over to the basic plan, you know, keep in mind, again, the change this year is that you can go to any specialist within the Piedmont network without a referral, but it's always been the case, regardless of the plan you're on, is that if you need to go out of the network, for example, to UVA or VCU, that you do have to have authorizations for things that are they're out of out of the network. We, we have, we have question. some questions, yep. Uh, so the first question is, what about name brand drugs prescribed by a doctor due to side effects of generic brand? So if you are currently taking a brand name drug for medical reasons, you can have your physician submit 
a request for a pre-authorization uh, with CVS, and that will be reviewed by a clinical team, and you very well may have that approved and be able to continue checking your brand name. Okay. Just a quick, someone asked about slide showing. There isn't slide showing at this point. We're just doing a QA. and a um, So the next question, can you explain the HSA and how it works? Well, basically on the HSA, which is, it's, it's somewhat unique from other plans that we see, the deductible, like say for a single person, the deductible of 3000 is also the out-of-pocket max, 3000 So basically you are paying everything with the exception of preventative care. Keep in mind that preventative care, regardless of the plan you're on, is always covered at 100%. Your annual checkups, your mammograms over 40, colonoscopies over 45. Preventative care is paid at 100%. But on the high deductible plan, you're going to be paying for your doctor visits, um, your prescriptions, until you get to the deductible. And again, that does match the out-of-pocket, and then everything at that point is paid 100%. <clears throat> So with the contribution that Centra is making, and most people would, in additional amount, take an additional amount of their paychecks, or you're building that account. So then when you do need to um, pay a bill, you have some money available. Now with, with the HSA, the money does have to be in the account. You know, if you have a, you know, a $500 bill, for instance, and you're going to get a debit card, you have to have $500 in that account in order to, to pay that. But you're basically paying everything until you get to that point. I would add to that too, on, on loss and self-service, we have a lot of information um, specifically about the HSA and how that operates from our vendor health equity. So I would encourage you if you have, if you still have questions on that, um, to go into Lawson and just read through their materials as well. And just a point of clarification, we had several questions yesterday between the HSA and the FSA. And to clarify, the HSA is paired specifically with the high deductible health plan and the FSA is an option that you can choose to pair if you are opting or into the basic plan, if you're choosing the basic plan. Okay, a uh, question, is Hill City Pharmacy, a local business, no longer in network with our prescription plan? I believe that they are um, in network. By November 1st, that list is going to be updated to include the local pharmacies. Um, I'll double check, but I believe Hill City is, is included. It's just that this was a more of a national list that's out there and they need to get the local in. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell me where the information is located about which providers PCHP requires referrals for? Well, our directory is located out on um, our website. However, keep in mind, within the network, you don't have to now have any referrals. In 2020. In 2020. Now, for the rest of <laughs> two, yes, 2019, <laughs> if you're on the... Um, Point of service plan, you still need referrals, but um, you know our full directory is is out there. But again, if you stay within Piedmont's network, you can go directly without a referral. Okay. Uh, if a dependent turns 26 mid-year, are they automatically dropped at that age from benefits? They are. They're actually no longer eligible to participate in medical dental or vision, and you will be notified um, about that when that time comes. And is it the last day of the month, right, in which they yes, turn 26? Yes, turn 26. Uh, will CVS work with the provider to get the prior authorization for the PPI, or is that on me to obtain the prior off? So you would be responsible for requesting that your physician submit the documentation to CVS. Okay. Um, I I saw a form to complete for students in college. Can you explain this? My oldest is in Memphis after he graduated college for a year internship. Would this include him? Yes, it would. At age 26, he would still come off. Okay. 
And so she was also asking about the the form, the form about uh, having a dependent that's out of state. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. so um, the question was, can you explain <laughs> this and maybe how we can how they can get to it and that kind of thing? Yeah, the form is out there. Um, you just basically it's a one page form. You just need to fill that out and send it into Piedmont, and then we would put your dependent into a different network. Uh, depending on where they are again so because we have many people that have dependents that are not even in school they're just living somewhere else um, so all you have to do is fill the form out and we will give them send them a different card with a different network on them and the form uh, was actually sent out um, a few weeks ago in the benefits news um, so if you want to look for that it was in there as attached to one of our recent emails if you can't find that you feel free to welcome uh, feel free to um, email myself Aubrey Vero uh, and I can get that form to you um, as quickly as, as you send send me an email we can also post that in loss and benefits employee self service okay and so we we'll, can post we'll it so today. we'll we'll have lots of opportunities to get that form um, I was just informed by PCHP that UVA was in network. Is that true? We do have a contract with UVA, it, but it is what's called a tertiary facility, which means that you absolutely have to have an authorization to go to, to UVA. So, you, you know, again, it needs an authorization. So you, you cannot go directly to, to UVA without medical management and as long as there's a service not provided here um, then they would most likely approve you to go to UVA but it does require authorization okay and then back to the um, to the question about a dependent that lives out of state um, if they get another card but they come here to visit can they still use in-network benefits yes All right, so we have um, we don't have any other questions coming through yet. So I think Barb has a couple other things that um, she covered yesterday <clears throat> in our call, just in general information. Uh, but if you have any other questions you want to ask, please go ahead and send those through. We're, we are here for a little bit longer and are happy to answer those. Um, really just want to, I guess, uh, remind people that Everyone has available Centra 24-7, which is the telehealth option. And this is really a great option if you haven't used it for uh, minor health conditions. If you're under the basic plan, there is no copay at all for that. So it's zero copay. If you're in the high deductible plan, it is uh, much more inexpensive than going to a physician's office. Currently, it is... $49. So really, if you haven't signed yourself up for telehealth, I really, um, I used it once myself and I just was like thrilled with it because it was really a quick and easy option to use. Um, one other point too, going back to the high deductible, you know, one, uh, the health savings account, a real advantage is the tax savings that uh, you have when you use that. And in 2020, the IRS limit for um, how much you can put into a health savings is $3,550 for a single person. For the family, $7,100. That's a combination of the employer contribution and your own money. Um, and if a person is 55 or older, they do also have a $1,000 catch-up. Uh, you know, for the person and, and also a spouse can, can do that catch up. But there's some real tax advantages. And over when you're over 65, I mean, people can use it for anything. They can go on a vacation with the money. I mean, before, you know, 65, it has to be for qualified medical expenses. But that's another real um, nice option with the health savings account. I think also another point to note between the FSA and the HSA, the HSA, if you do not use those funds, they continue to roll over from year to year, whereas the FSA, if you do not use the funds, then you lose them. If you do not use them by March 15th of the following calendar year, you lose those funds. So that's another um, 
another bit of information that's good to know. Um, uh, so Cheryl sent in a question about pre-existing conditions related to the hospital indemnity plan. So we actually had this come up, um, a similar question come up prior to either of the webinars we've been doing. And I'm doing a little bit further research on that. And if other people do have that question, we will include it. We are, pre we are recording these sessions and then we'll be putting together um, like an FAQ with the questions that came through. So I will include that question on what to tell them what the question is the pre-authorization for hospital indemnity that question yeah yeah so i will we will include that in the the q a that we send out after um the uh the webinars today um I'm, i don't know that it'll come out today but we will be sending that out to every to everyone as well or posting it to, to find uh, can employees on other insurances uh, outside of PCHP use Centra 24 7? Yes. I mean, actually, I think anyone can use Centra 24 7. Mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily come through the health plan, but it's available. But they would pay the $49. Yeah, they would pay the, the okay. cost if they're not on the medical plan. Mm -hmm. um, can we use HSA for co payments, prescriptions, et cetera? Yes. Okay. Any qualified medical expense or even vision or dental can, you know, long as it's a you know, press, um, considered expense, you can use you mm -hmm. can use your account. Okay. If I could add something to back to the question about the pre-existing conditions for hospital indemnity, all those are listed. Oh, you have a on list the of brochure um, under exclusions and limitations, um, and there is particularly a childbirth limitation that uh, this would not pay in the first nine months that you have this coverage. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, can you share a little bit about the investment of HSA funds and how funds are managed? I would direct people straight to the Health Equity website for investment uh, information, and they can always call Health Equity as well to find out how they're managed, what options are available, et cetera. Okay. Uh, does an HSA have a card like the FSA? Yes, there is a debit card uh, that's available with an HSA. Okay. Do we also want to make the point that the FSA is uh, specifically for medical expenses, but not for vision and dental, that there is a limited purpose FSA for vision and dental? Sure. So if you have the high deductible health plan and you have an HSA, you can use that HSA for medical, dental, or vision expenses. If you would prefer that your contributions, along with Centra's contributions, stay in your HSA account, become invested, and you want to see that happen over the long term, you can also elect a limited purpose FSA, which is only for dental and vision expenses under the high deductible health plan. If you have the basic plan, you can elect an FSA health care. Uh, option, but not the limited purpose. So the limited purpose is only for the high deductible health plan for dental and vision. Great. Do medical, dental, and vision expenses all count towards the max out of pocket under the high deductible health plan? So under the medical plan, uh, any medical plan, or our medical plans rather, under each, dental and vision are not. Uh, included under the medical plan. There's a separate insurance benefit for that. Okay. All great questions. While we're waiting for another question, if you're considering the high deductible plan, there is a, a generic preventative drug list mm -hmm. That if if you're you should look at that because if you're taking one of these medications that's listed, it that could be a medication that um, would be zero cost share. So um, 
that's the you should take a look at that list. I think that's also posted out on Lawson too. Yes, yeah. that that um, is posted on Lawson as well. The generic drug list. Um, I'm going to put up if uh, we'll wait for a couple more questions if there are any. I'm going to put up um, just a slide here with um, our enrollment information. So you should have seen this come out uh, yesterday in our benefits news. Um, it should be up on Centra People. Um, but this is the website that came out yesterday in benefits news, and then is the phone number that you can contact um, with to enroll. If you want to enroll over the phone, you're welcome to call and enroll. Um, but if you want to jot any of this down and have it readily available for your caregivers or yourself, um, I just wanted to make that available for you all to have um, easily accessible. Um, that information is also included in the enrollment guide. Yes. If you misplace that, it's always available in the, in, in the guide posted in Lawson. Thanks, Brenda. Um, so we, uh, uh, another question has come in. Are wellness and preventative care visits added towards the deductible even though they are covered at 100%? No, because they're paid 100%, so there's no, there's no cost that a person is paying towards those. They're just going to be paid at 100%, and that's another you know, good thing to know if you're on that plan that those kind of visits, you're not you know you're not paying for all right well if there are any more questions again um, feel free to ask those uh, just a couple of reminders as we go through out open enrollment season we will be um, live with open enrollment through November 20 there will be opportunities next week on Monday Wednesday and Friday we will send some more information about those out to do a webinar just like this for all caregivers across the system. Uh, so you are welcome to uh, encourage your um, caregivers to jump on a call next week as well if they are available. We will record those as well so that they can um, listen to them at any time. We know a lot of people are on the floor and can't get access to um, something at, at any specific time during the day. Um, and then of course just uh, getting out there and make sure all eligible eligible employees are um, going into the website provided right here or calling in and making sure to elect benefits or decline their benefits for the 2020 plan year. Um, when will all FAQs be available and who will they go to? So we will um, have those available um, hopefully by the end of the week, but I will say uh, for sure by early next week. Uh, we will probably post those um, either on Centra People or we will include them in one of our benefits newsletters, uh, but we will make sure that they are easily found, um, that you can access them at any point in time during the open enrollment season. All right, well, I will leave just another moment to, to ask any questions, but we really appreciate you jumping on this call today. We hope it was helpful. Um, we will be following up with that information and make sure you know where to find it with FAQs. And of course, we'll be posting the um, recorded sessions as well uh, for you to access in the future. So um, thanks again. Looks like we don't have any other questions, so we, um, we hope that you have a great day and really enjoy this open enrollment season this year. All right, I'm going to sign us off. Thank you. Thank you.